distillery to Isla. I say new, it's been here like seven or eight years, um, but it's been doing good stuff, getting fairly popular, and it looks like they're doing some expansion as well at the moment. Um, they've got quite a few trucks, diggers, building sites spattered about the place. So the distillery has been built on a farmyard. Um, and it's still quite quaint, rural. The drive over here was really nice, there were some more incredible views. I've forgotten the name of the lock that we were um, driving up alongside. but. any of the other distilleries that you've visited already. All distilleries are unique, they have their own sort of quirks. Kilhoman is um, an independently owned family run distillery. They, um, this distillery was, is quite young because it um, was only established in 2005. So this distillery was founded by Anthony Wills who is sitting in here. He is still our managing director today. His wife has three sons that are involved in this business and they're very much hands on. So, and they're not kind of like in the background somewhere, they really are working here day to day. Um, this distillery is the smallest distillery on Isla. Um, at the moment we make about 220,000 litres of spirit, but as you might have already noticed, there's a huge amount of construction work going on at the moment um, because we're expanding. We hope to produce up to 300,000 litres by the end of this year. Um, so we're going to go through the process bit by bit. We'll start over on the malting floor, start with a dram, and then we'll have a dram at the end of the tour as well. And then a couple of tastes of things in between. Malting floor. Have some of you seen a malting floor before? Yeah. So it's quite unusual to see that. And we're lucky to have three, three of those distillers on Isla. So for more, you might have seen this with Roy and here at Hill Woman. Um, first of all, I'll pour you a wee dram. This is our 100% Isla whiskey. At Hill Woman, um, the range that we have available just now in the shop, um, much of it is a limited edition. So we only have two whiskies that you'll find available all the time, on demand. One is called Master Bay and the other is called Sandy. As you can hear right now, the, the sort of augers and conveyor belts are working and the barley's coming up and it's being laid on our malting floor. In fact, I think Ali, this guy, will be spreading it out as it comes in all nice and evenly on the malt floor, on the kiln floor up there. Later on, we'll start a little fire here. It's not a massive fire, it tends to sit in the middle here and all of the smoke, the peat smoke from that fire rises naturally and passes through the floor to infuse the grain sitting above. So this is where all of that peaty flavour in your whisky comes from. From this part of the process, it's just carried through all stages and into the whisky that you drink. This is the, the main production area that we'll be in today. From this part of the tour, you're going to see the whole process from milling right through to distilling. This building is very old, it's much older than the distillery because the distillery, if you've done your maths, is just uh, 13 years old now, just over. Um, Kilholman Distillery is based on Rockside Farm, which is about 200 years old I would imagine. Many of the buildings we've used to house our equipment are just old farm buildings like this one. This still house 
that you're in just now is how it's been since day one really. Um, but soon we'll be breaking down the wall that's at the end here because on the other side we have an extension and at the very end of that extension we have two new stills. They're exactly the same as these and they'll be in operation from about June we hope. So we are doubling capacity over the next few years. Um, even when we double, we'll still be by far the smallest distillery on Isla. Um, what we make here currently in the whole year, to put into comparison, Kalila makes at the moment in about just over two weeks. The next part of the process, as I'm sure some of you are aware already, is milling. We have a Porteous mill here. It's about, actually it's exactly 68 years old at the moment. And it's the only piece of equipment that Anthony Wells bought for this distillery as second hand. Everything else was designed and purpose built for us. So the Porteous Mill is just through here. You'll see it very soon as we go back to the washbacks. Um, this mill, like all of the others, has two sets of rollers inside that are malted barley will pass through. Breaking open the hard shell and breaking the barley grain down further to small pieces called grits and flour. All together this forms our grist. Which then comes up another conveyor belt here and into the grist bin. One point two tons of grist is required here for every mash at the moment. And when it's ready to, to start a mash, we'll release that barley grist inside our mash tun and add hot water, three separate hot waters. So what we're making at this point in the process is just a sweet sugary water with that smoky characteristic carrying through as well. So this is no alcohol in it at the moment. This is just the sweet sugary water. It's quite clear. Um, it's got that smoky flavour sort of lingering in the background. To this wort we add 20 kilos of yeast and then that yeast begins the work of fermentation so it's feeding on all of the sugars in this. That's why the sugars are important and it gives out alcohol and carbon dioxide as a byproduct. So over time within this wash vat um, the sugary sweet water is being converted into something that's more like an ale or a beer. The fermentation time here is quite long, it's the longest of any distillery that I know of on Isla at the moment, 85 hours on average. We have a long fermentation time here because at Kilhoman we're focused on making good young um, whiskies. And when we first were established it was important to be able to keep the place open and have that turnover of cash and um, that we were able to release whiskies as young as three years old. At the end of that time we have this beer which will be about 8% in strength and will be completely different both to taste and to look at and to smell probably um, than this water we have. Okay so over here in the, on your left hand side you've got that wash still. Um, this is where we're going to distill the beer. So 3,000 litres comes in. These are like massive kettles, heated with a, an element type thing in the bottom, big pipes that steam flows through, that keeps the liquid inside boiling, and like a kettle, vapours are released, which we capture as we come up the neck, along the line arm, and here we have a condenser, so this, the vapours are cooled, and the liquid collected travels along and through our spirit safe here. So in this first installation, we just look at the first window here. This you can see just now flowing is the low wines, which on average are 19% strength after this first installation. And from 3,000 litres of beer entered in here, only 1,000 litres are captured as low wines. In this tank below we have our 1,000 litres, but our heads and tails from the second distillation are going to also flow down to this tank. The strength will be about 26% and the volume 1600 litres. So we get about 600 litres coming from there. All of this is then taken collectively and charged into our spirit still. So 1600 litres coming in, see so it's got a capacity of just over that. 
Um, and this is heated in the same way. So again, those steam-filled pipes keep that spirit boiling to separate the spirits in this second distillation into three cuts. The heads, the heart, and the tails. So, at the very beginning, the spirit begins to flow. We'll collect the head for the first five minutes through this middle collection bowl. And that will also just come straight down to mix with our low wines. After the five minutes, our stillmen fill up one of these little sample beakers and they take a reading of the strength, which should be 75 or 76 percent. That's recorded here by hand. And then at that point, they'll move the lever and begin collecting the heart. Now that's the good stuff. Only the heart right now will be filled into our casks um, in a little while. It'll flow here for the next full hour of the filling, collecting the whole heart as it gradually decreases in strength to after the hour being about 65.5% strength. Just to check, again, we'll take a sample, record that, and then move the lever back to collect the third and final cut, the tails, which will also flow down to join the heads and the low winds below. Once that's complete, again, we have our 1,600 litres that we can start another distillation with. So this is not wasted. It will be redistilled later. Only though, the heart, which we've captured in our wee tank below the floor, is ready to be taken over to the next warehouse where we add a little water, reducing it from 70% to 63.5 and fill it directly into casks to be matured to become whiskey. Um, so we call it New Make Spirit. Lots of people assume because all the colour in our whiskey comes from the casks, but it does here, we never add caramels, um, it's all natural. A lot of the flavour comes from the cask, but this is like the DNA of the distillery. This is full of flavours as well, although it doesn't look like whiskey yet. Um, this is what you want to shine through. So you can mature in different types of cask, but you don't want to mask completely the flavours in this. You really just have to wipe your lips, it's pretty strong. And you'll see that now it's ever so slightly discoloured, it's not quite as clear as the stuff flowing through the spirit still. That's because we've added our peaty water. The water, if you've been to the toilet and washed your hands already, comes out of the taps quite brown because of the peat in the ground as it's collected from the, the dam. Thank you. Okay, so from the, the still house, that spirit comes along, it comes into this tank here, which is called a filling tank. That's where we add a little bit of that nice peaty water, reducing it down to 63.5. And here you can see they're painting and preparing some bourbon barrels to be filled with our spirit. All of our warehousing here is dunnage in style, so you don't see any rack warehousing or palletized warehousing in any of our one, two, three, four warehouses that we have at the moment. Um, and all of our whiskey is matured on Isla. Not only are the variety of casks going to give a different type of whiskey, but every individual cask is unique. There are no two the same. So the whiskey that we fill into this one or the spirit will mature to become quite a different whiskey perhaps to the one next to it. So in order to make our consistently available single malts, we do vattings. This is where our master distillers at the distilleries are responsible for tasting and selecting casks. Maybe up here, up to about 30 casks for their unique qualities, like ingredients in our recipe that we're making. All of those ingredients are taken here from the warehouse and all emptied into this big tank called a vatting tank, where all of the individual characteristics will marry and we can bottle something that's the same. So this is called vatting. It's not blended whiskey that we're producing. If every single barrel selected to go into that tank is from one distillery. From the vatting tank, we then bottle, and we are bottling, I think. So if you want to come in, we can have a wee look through the window. work in here Monday to Friday 9 to 5. The most amount of bottles they filled in one day is about 3,000, just over 3,000 bottles. So this is the 
Macher Bay. Thank you. Has anyone tried Macher Bay before? Yes. Macher Bay is a, our standard flagship whiskey in the range. It is always available, 46% strength, and this is now made with Portellans barley that's delivered to us as malted barley ready to use. So the PPM, how PTS is a bit more, it's 50 PPM. The average age in Macher Bay is about five years old. It's made from a variety of casks, as I said, normally about 30 in that batting tank, but they're all under 10 years old. So there's another whiskey that we have, which is basically the same as this in most ways, except one, and that's the ratio of how much bourbon and sherry's in it. So the same strength, the same PPM, the same age, the same bourbon and sherry influence, but now 70% of the influence comes from sherry, sherry oloroso and 30% comes from bourbon. As I said before, all of our whiskies are natural, we don't add caramels at all here, so all of the colour in this comes from the casks. This is also free for you to try if you like, so um, if you want to try that for your macro bay, just ask. So that one's the cask strength one, um, that one's much stronger than the other two. This is 46, 50 and that one is 54.7 I think the new one, yeah. This one's, is this your own peated though, so it's not? No, none of these are, only the 100% Isla that we have at the moment. Okay. Sometimes the single casks are, but it'll say 100% Isla somewhere on the label. Like okay. This. It doesn't smell heavily peated. No, it's a bit more... It's a 10 year old, which we don't do all that much yeah. of at the moment. We've done a few 10 year old single casks for the shop. This one's pork cask. <laughs> so, Kilhoman was a nice, authentic tour, a great little distillery. And it's really good to see how they're expanding, how they're developing, and they're going from success to success, being rewarded for doing it the right way. Um, as you can probably tell, it's getting really quite blustery and we've just heard that some of the ferries are getting cancelled so we're going to have to check and make sure that we're actually going to get to go home on time. 